Okay, in this second video we're going to be looking at the diffraction grating equation. This is quite an important one, uh, pretty much whenever you have any question involving diffraction gratings and numbers, this equation is going to come up. Well, where does it come from? Uh, the answer is pretty straightforward, it comes from here. Uh, as before, feel free to write that down, that's really all the derivation that you need. The most important, or I guess the most tricky thing, is setting it up in the first place. To get from line 1 to line 2, not that difficult. So let's go through how this works and start off by looking at the setup. This here is our diffraction grating. You can see we've got two gaps there. The diffraction grating itself will have a huge number of, of slits or, or gaps. We're only really interested in two of them. Uh, and the question becomes what condition is necessary for us to have an order? In, the, in other words, for these rays to combine constructively so that we've got a proper ray of light coming through. Because you'll remember with your diffraction grating you can shine light through and you'll get your zero for order that comes straight through. You also get these orders that are kind of down like that. Uh, and we want to know what angles they're going to be at. Uh, in other words, we're trying to work out what this angle here is, this theta. It turns out this theta, this angle here, is the same as the angle between the uh, the normal of the diffraction grating, this line coming out here, or you can think of it as the zeroth order, same thing applies, between that line there and the order that we're getting. So between this line here and that, that is the same angle as between this line and that. Okay, so the question becomes what is theta, how can we work out what theta is? Um, and in order for us to get an order, we need to have this extra path difference, this extra distance that this top ray has got to travel. It's got to be equal to a whole number of wavelengths. That's the condition uh, for constructive interference to occur, which is what you need for your order to work. So we need this distance here, this extra distance, to be equal to a whole number of wavelengths. Um, of the particular wave that's going through. Otherwise you're not going to get an order. That's just something for you to remember. So this distance here is n lambda, where n is a whole number. So this whole n lambda thing just means some sort of multiple, some whole number multiple of uh, the wavelength of the light that we're using. And this value of d here, that's just the size of the gap. Um, between those two slits. Remember it's a diffraction grating, we've got loads and loads of slits, we were only really interested in two of them um, because the same logic will apply no matter how many slits you've got. So this then becomes a bit of trigonometry, it's a pretty straightforward process. We've got a right angled triangle here and we know that the sine of the angle here is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. In other words sine theta is n lambda over d. You can rearrange that, of course, to get d sine theta is equal to n lambda. So if you draw that uh, in the exam, sorry for the reflection on the board, uh, if you draw that uh, in the exam and then you do the rest of that, then you have derived the diffraction grating equation and everything is wonderful.